now look at strategies in solving word problems. So in solving word problems, we use models to represent the unknown. So for example, the school canteen sold a total of 48 fruit juices during afternoon snack. The canteen sold grape juice and orange juice only. If it sold twice as many grape juices as orange juices, how many orange juices were sold? Let us look at this part. It sold twice as many grape juices as orange juices. So we represent the number of orange juices by one box. But the number of grape juices was twice as many. Okay, so when you say twice, we have two boxes times two. And then it says here that you have a total of 48 fruit juices. So when you add this up, this is 48. Now our goal in solving word problems using models is to find the number inside the box. Now it says here that 48 is good for three boxes. So what is the number inside each box? 48 is for three boxes. So one box is equivalent to 48 divided by 3, right? This one. So that is 16. But the question is, how many orange juices were sold? So based from our model, the answer is 16. Okay? But what if the question was, how many grape juices were sold? The answer is 32. So always go back to the question. Make sure that you are shading the correct answer. Alright, so this problem here looks a bit intimidating, but don't worry. Carla and Ellen, together weigh 130. Ellen and Rio weigh 104. Carla and Ria weigh 180. What is Ria's weight? Take note that I drew it in such a way that they have, in each column, I have the same person, okay? Now, I see here, there's a, there's an E and E here. So, what I will do is, I will add them. So, when I add this, this plus this, so that's 234. But, what is that? We have C, and then you have 2E, 2E, oops, that's E, E, and then R. This is equal to 130 plus... 104 or 234. But then, so I'm done with this too. If I look at C and R here, okay, I will subtract. So I will subtract what is C plus R? That is 180. So this is 4 and then 54. When I subtract this, but then I take away C and R. So I'm left with the two boxes of E, right? So, this is good for E, E. So, that means Ellen weighs 27, right? But what we want is Ria. But from here, Ellen plus Ria is 104. Let me just draw that. Ellen, Ria combined together is 104, but Ellen is already 27. So, how will we get Ria? That's 104 minus 27. So the answer is 77. Okay, so in the last model, in the last problems that we had, we use models. Now, in, there are also certain problems that can be answered easily by substituting the values in the choices and using trial and error. For example, if twice the sum of three consecutive numbers is 222 and the sum of the two smaller numbers is 73, then what is twice the largest number? Now, in this case, we are looking for twice the largest number. But in order to get the answer, we need first to find what are the numbers itself, right? So, let's try letter A. If 72 is the is twice the largest number, that means that the largest number is 36, right? Divided by 2. Because 36 times 2 is 72. What do we mean by consecutive? Sunod, sunod. So the three numbers would be 35 and 34. 
And then, we want to find the numbers that will fit in our problem. But it says also that the sum of the two smaller numbers is 73. What is the sum of 34 and 35? That is 69, right? So, since this is smaller than 73, we want to go up. I will check letter D. Wait, I should not encircle that. I'm not yet sure. We will just check. If it is 78, that means what is our number? 78 divided by 2, so that would be 39, right? So this is 38, 37. What is the sum of the two numbers here? 37 plus 38 is 75. Too big, right? So that means I need to go down. Let's try 76. If it's 76, what is the largest number? If it is 76, that's the biggest number is 38, right? So we have 37, 36. And then the sum of this is 73. There you go. So the answer is letter C. Actually, we did not even bother with the 222. But then again, let's check. Just to make sure that it fits perfectly in our problem. Okay. Let's get the sum first. This is 111. Great. So twice the sum is, so times 2, you really get 222. Next. 4 less than the product of a number and 6 is 44. What is the number? So again, we will use trial and error. So we want to find the number. Let's try letter A if it's 2. 4 less than the product of a number and 6. So that means 2 times 6 and then minus 4, right? 4 less than, that means minus 4. So this is 8. Wrong. It's too small. That means we need to go up. Let's try 8. So I will now change this to 8. So this is read as 4 less than the product of 8 and 6. So 8 times 6 and then 4 less than. Correct. This is 48 minus 4. We really get 44. So that's why the answer is letter D. So did you see what we did? If what we had is smaller than what we want, that means, okay, we need to go up. I saved time because I did not bother with 4 and 6 anymore. Next, the product of the digits of a two-digit number is 12. If the tenths digit is subtracted from the units digit, the result is 4. What is the two-digit number? Look at the second sentence. If the tenths digit is subtracted from the units digit, the result is 4. Which among this automatically gives us that? The tens digit is subtracted from. So meaning to say you have units digit minus tens digit. It's not letter A. Rather, it's letter D. So 6 minus 2 is 4. And also, the product of the digits is 12. Actually, for all of them, the product of the two digits is 12, right? So letter D for all of these choices, right? The product is 12. So they all satisfy the first sentence. So we looked for the number which satisfies the second sentence. And that answer is letter D. Okay, pause your video and try to answer. Assuming that you have already paused it, let us now discuss. When a number is added to the square of that same number, the sum is 56. What is that number? Let's try 4. So this says, when 4 is added to the square of 4, the sum is 56. No, when 4 is added to the square of 4, this is 20. That means I need to go up. So A cannot be the answer. Let's try D. Instead of 4, I will make it 7. When 7 is added, to the square of 7. This is 7 plus 49. I get 56. So that's it. Which of the following can be expressed as the product of two consecutive numbers? Again, pause your videos. What is the answer here? The answer is 
30, right? Because this is 6 times 5. Consecutive means they're next to each other. 5 and 6, correct? Letter A. There is no need to compute there. So again, pause your video and try to answer the problem. Let us now discuss. So what do we want to find here? How much money did she collect after selling all the oranges? Now, she has 25 cartons, and each carton has 128 oranges. So, from there, we can get the number of oranges. So, the number of oranges that she has is 25 times 128. I did not compute that product. I'll just leave it as is for today. Next, she packed them into bags of 8 oranges each. So, one bag has 8 Orange. So we want to know how many bags does she have. The number of bags that she has is the number of oranges, right, over 8. Because one bag has 8 oranges. So that's 25 times 128 divided by 8. Now, the reason why I did not multiply 25 and 128 is because I will divide, right? 128 divided by 8, 16. See? So this is 25 times 16. With, if I multiply this, that's a big number, and then I will divide it by 10, it will take a longer time, right? So now, I just want this, 25 times 16. So what is that? Wait. The number of bags is 400. So she has 400 bags. But each bag, she sold for 30 pesos. So how much did she collect? So it's 400 times 30. So that's 12,000 pesos. Letter D. Last problem. Pause your videos again. Okay, let us now discuss. Mrs. Santos bought 200 pence at 25 pesos for 80. She sold all of them at 4 for 20 pesos. So this is just saying that one pen is like 5 pesos. What is this? 25 for 80 pesos. What was the cost for her to buy the 200 pens? So if you have 25 pens, that's 80 pesos. So if you have 100 pens, so that's 425. So this is 320, right? Times 4. So therefore, she bought the 200 pence for 200 is times 2 of 100. So she bought it at 640. But then again, she sold each pen at 5 pesos each. So this is the cost for her. And then how much did she sell it? So one pen is 5 pesos. So 200 pence, so that's times 200, times 200, that is 1,000. So meaning to say, she sold that for 1,000 pesos, but she bought it for 640. So how much profit did she make? 1,000 minus 640, that is 360 pesos.